Today I live in a famine. Today I live in a land that's dried up. Today I live in a land where you go to different cities and you go to different places in America. It's very similar, Wilmington. There's a lot of Wilmingtons in different places throughout the U.S. People say, don't go there, don't go here, don't go over there. Don't go to this city, don't go to that city, don't go to that neighborhood at 10 o'clock at night. Why? Why is there crime? Why is there death and decay? Why is there prostitution? Why is there abortion? Why is there murder? Where I come from, from Chicago, why is there shootings throughout Chicago? Why is there shootings throughout Philly? What is, what is there to do to bring change? What would reverse all of the things that look like quote-unquote hell on earth? My friends, in this life, you are close to hell as you want to be, and you could be close to heaven as you want to be, but this place is not heaven and this place is not hell. That hell is worse. It's beyond worse. That it would take a man, a young man, to come to Wilmington to catch a plane, to come to Philly, to drive 35, 40 minutes to come to Wilmington to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because this is not a fairy tale. This is not a made up story. This is the same message that could save your soul. This is the same message that could redeem you if we're outside of Christ today. This is the same message that could resurrect you. This is the same message that could save you. I believe in the gospel today. A lot of people don't believe in the gospel today. A lot of people are lost today. A lot of people are wandering today. A lot of people don't know their way. A lot of people don't know their purpose in life. A lot of people may be wealthy. A lot of people may have many cars. A lot of people may have a lot of bank accounts and real estate, but yet their life is empty. Yeah, there's some well-known people, there's some, there's some celebrities, yeah, there's some athletes, yeah, there's some people throughout the world today that are athletes and, and things of that nature, but they don't actually serve God. They're not actually living for God, and since that's the case, they're empty inside the void. I live in a very dark land today. I'm not talking about the sun beaming or the sun being gone. I'm talking about those full of people today that are darkness, that are in darkness, that are sinners and need the light of God today. I see a nation that's decaying. I see a nation that is crumbling right before our eyes and a lot of people do not see it. And then there's some people that do see it, but want to ignore it. They want to ignore the fact that things are going to get worse. They want to ignore that the things that are happening in this nation are beginning to shift. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy that I live in a nation that is selfish. I live in a nation where a lot of people are blind today. I live in a nation that is void of the truth of God. I live in a nation that is drunk off of propaganda. I live in a nation where people will listen to the news, but they won't listen to the truth of God. I live in a nation today that is not seeing what's going to happen in America and in different countries around the corner telling you today this is the most urgent message you ought to listen to not because i'm preaching it but because god's word is true and since god's word is true what are you going to do with god's word my friends 
if what I'm preaching today is full of fairy tales and it's not actually true, then I'm wasting my particular Saturday on a really good Saturday with the sun beaming in front of my eyes. I'm wasting my time. But if I'm really telling the truth, which I know that I am because God has made it evident, and God has made it evident to you, that we are all going to stand before God. What are you doing to prepare yourself to meet your maker? All of us, whether you believe in God or if you don't, we all came into this world with nothing, and we are going to leave this world with nothing. But my friends, the most valuable thing that abides in your body, your tent, if I see you and I look you in your face, I see your face, I see your body. But you're not just a body, you are a spiritual being. You have a body, you have a soul, you have a spirit. You could, if you begin to look at somebody in a casket, you see that their body's there, but you know that they're not there anymore because their soul and spirit has lifted up out of their body. My friends, you are a spiritual being. My friends, you are, e you are an eternal being, which means that you are going to live forever. Our bodies will return to the dust, but our soul and spirit will last forever. Now, my friends, this is an urgent thing that you should begin to listen to and begin to wake up to the reality of your soul. To the reality of your soul that your soul is going to be here forever in terms of eternity. And there's two places. Some will go to heaven and some will go to hell. My friends, this may shock you, but there are no good people in heaven. It's only forgiven people that did criminal acts in this lifetime that were guilty in their sins before God, but God pardoned them, God forgave them, God restored them. That's what's so powerful of the Word of God. That's what's so powerful of the Gospel. And life is nothing but a vapor. Life is like a firecracker that appears for a second and is gone the next. Life is like a cloud of smoke that goes into the air and then it's gone. Life is fast. I remember when I was 10. I remember when I was 15. I remember when I was 20. Where has the time gone? Second after second, minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day week after week, month after month, year after year, where are you going to go when you die? I remember when I was 16 years old, nobody told me about God, nobody told me about what I'm telling you today. I remember when I was 16 years old, I said, when I die, where am I gonna go? And no, I was not raised up in church. I wasn't always a preacher. I wasn't always a Christian. And, and, and quite honest, when it comes to being a Christian, that has, that has been watered down, especially in America. You know, the dope dealer down the street, he could say that he's a Christian. Or the crooked politician down the street, he could say that he's a Christian. Or this person over here says they're a Christian. But you're not a Christian just because you say that you are. You're a disciple of Jesus because you have encountered God. See, my friends, you may know things about God, but you don't know God if you're not in a relationship with God. See, I could say that I know James Harden. I could say that I know Kyrie Irving. I, I could say that I know Aaron Rodgers. I could say I know Justin Bieber, but I don't actually personally know them. I may know things about them, but I don't know them. My friends, do you know God today and does God know you? Are you in a relationship with God where you are relationally knowing God? See, a lot of us were taught, and a lot of us believe this in our mind, that when it comes to quote-unquote religion, it's all about putting money in an offering bucket. It's all about going to a priest for the priest to uh, forgive me of my sins. It's, a, it's all about going to church every single Sunday. See, God is not looking for a good appearance in our good deeds, in our good works. God is seeing if we truly indeed have repented. 
He's seeing if we truly have received the free gift of God. What is the free gift? For the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, my friends, there's a payment for sin, but there's a free gift that's given by God to man. And this precious gift is given for free. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to do 9,000 push-ups. You don't need to go to church every single Sunday to receive this gift. You don't need to pray every night before you go to bed. Though some of those things could be noble things, but that does not equate to salvation. That does not equal you being right with God. Are you right with God today, Wilmington? Are you right with God, Wilmington? Are you preparing yourself to meet your maker, Wilmington? Oh yes, you can go back to your life as usual. You can continue to walk, you continue to sit and stand and drive away and things of that nature. But regardless, just like this pole over here that still stands, the word of God still stands even if you say that the word is a lie. Even if you say that God doesn't exist and he's a lie, the word of God still stands like that pole. Because I can say all day that there's no pole, but it still stands as a pole. My friends, what will you do with the word of God? What are you going to do with the, with the battle that's happening in our nation? What are you going to do to prepare yourself just like in the same way that many of you prepared yourself for self-preservation when the pandemic happened? When people were uh, getting vaccinated and people were putting on masks and things of that nature, you were preparing yourself for what has come. Well, just in the same way, prepare yourself to meet God. It's crazy today. People want to take care of their bodies, but who's going to take care of your soul? It's only God. I can't take care of your soul. The pastor down the street can't take care of your soul. Your church attendants down the street can't take care of your soul. Are you made right with God today? Oh, yes. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit has come to convict men of their sins. Now, conviction is good, because even for myself as a preacher and now a disciple of Jesus, I still get convicted. It's the good thing to be convicted, because now that you know that you have committed crimes, not to the Delaware Police Department, but you have committed crimes against a holy and righteous God. See, people can murder somebody or sell dope and nobody finds out, or maybe they did find out, but they never got caught. I want to tell you today, God doesn't pardon sinners that die in their sins. You will give an account for your sins if you die in that state. Now this is an urgent message you ought to be listening to because your soul is in the balance. And you have to repent. Conviction is good. Repentance is good because God forgives his enemies. But what I'm saying to you, friends, if you die in your sins, God will not forgive you. Because salvation is here. The love of God is here. The hope of God is here. The mercy of God is here. But will you take the free gift? Will you repent and take the free gift of God? If you reject the free gift of God in this life, hell will be your destination. Hell will be your portion. And that's a sad reality because even as myself as a preacher and all of us on this planet, we don't know the day that we're going to die. Why are you not thinking about this reality? Why are people not thinking about their souls today? I don't care how much money you have and I don't care how much money you don't have. You need to think about your soul today. You need to think about, am I personally right with God? God forbid, I'm not wishing this upon you, but these are critical, critical questions to ask. If I were to die today and stand before God, and God would say, why should I let you into my kingdom? What would you say? You know that God is real, Wilmington. Stop playing games with God. God's made it evident through his word that people know the reality of the truth, but they suppress it. There is no such thing as an agnostic. There is no such thing as an atheist, if you were to categorize yourself as that. 
All that is, is you're just suppressing the truth. You know God is real. You know the reality of God. But you choose to suppress it. Why? When God is offering eternal life and an everlasting life. Why?